Good afternoon, and thank you for allowing me to um, speak my thoughts. I'm actually going to only be excerpts of this. I believe you have my full testimony. Um, and I'm going to read it so that we can go quickly. So my name's Anita Cameron. Uh, I am a 54-year-old with multiple disabilities, two of which are degenerative and one which will take my life. I'm testifying in opposition to HB 1659, the New Hampshire Death with Dignity Act. And I'm not going to use the euphemism, um, that's the name of this bill. Um, I'm going to refer to it exactly what it is. It is physician assisted suicide. And it's very important that we be upfront and clear and honest about what this is. It's couching it in pretty language and hiding the truth is disingenuous at best and dangerous at worst. So as, a, as disabled people know very well, doctors often make mistakes about whether a person is terminal or not. In June 2009, while living in Washington State, my mother was determined to be in the final stages of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and placed in hospice. So two months later, I was told that her body had begun the process of dying. My mother wanted to go home to Colorado to die, so the arrangements were made. A funny thing happened, though. Once she got there, her health began to improve. And over 10 years later, she's still alive, lives in her own home in the community, and is reasonably active. So I'm here as Director of Minority Outreach for Not Dead Yet, a national disability rights organization opposed to physician-assisted suicide and euthanasia as deadly forms of discrimination against people with disabilities, whether terminally ill or not. I live in Rochester, New York, but I work with people of color and other marginalized communities around the nation. Our healthcare system inherently reflects the biases of the broader culture. The study shows that blacks and people of color receive inferior medical treatment compared to whites. We are less likely to receive adequate treatment for heart conditions, diabetes, cancer, and chronic pain. The lives of people with disabilities are largely devalued by doctors and society in general. If in, the, in addition, one's from the lesbian, gay, bisexual, or trans community as I am, that devaluation becomes exponential. That the lives of disabled people are seen as less than is borne out in the preamble to the, this bill, the New Hampshire bill. Excuse me, you have spoken for three minutes. Could you um, try to finish what you have to say? Sure. Thank you. I'm going to talk about the expanded definition of terminal. So another thing that is told about this bill is the definition of terminal is broader than one realizes. Born out in an email between Fabian Staley of Sweden and Craig New, who is a research analyst with the Oregon Department of uh, Public Health Division. Um, and Mr. Staley asked if the doctor suggests to an eligible patient a treatment that could possibly A, prolong life, B, transform a terminal illness to a chronic illness, or even cure the disease, and if the patient doesn't give his or her consent to the proposed treatment, is he or she eligible to take use of the act? If a patient with a chronic disease, for instance, for instance, diabetes, by some reason decides to opt out, from the life-sustaining medical treatment and by doing so is likely to die within six months, thereby transforming the chronic disease to a terminal disease, does he or she then become eligible? And that response, I'm going to just say in a word, it's more borne out in my testimony, I'm going to say in a word, yes. Could I repeat again, could you please finish, give us a closing sentence, and let me explain why. There are so many people who want to speak. The only way to be fair to everyone is to limit to three minutes. So I'm not trying to be hard on you or on anyone else. I'm trying to be respectful of the entire group. Thank you. Thank you. To say that this is frightening 
for people with disabilities, sick people, seniors, and poor people who rely on public assistance is an understatement. Under the proposed assisted suicide law, because of our cost-cutting climates with health we're living in, more and not fewer people will fall prey to assisted suicide. Please vote no on H.R. 1659. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming here to share your thoughts, and we appreciate it very much. The chair.